Hey friends, coming to you from Sleepless in Omaha. Hey, what else is there to do when you can't sleep in Omaha but meditate on the Lord? That's, that's really all there is. What else is there? He is the way, the truth, the life. Everything else is a lie. It's a deception. It's death. In him is life. In him is eternal life. So as I was laying upon my bed, of course, I just naturally turned to set my heart upon him. He's just released an amazing revelation the last few days. Um, I don't know when I'll release some of it because people are having a hard time grabbing some of these things. How can I take them deeper yet? I don't know. But um, it's just getting clearer and clearer and clearer. Um, as we're approaching the amazing things the Lord is going to do in this hour. But um, in um, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, uh, 22 is one of my numbers. Jeremiah 31, 22 says, um, the Lord is doing a new thing in the earth. The Lord is doing a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. So what is that talking about? <laughs> the Lord shall do a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. The King James translates it. What's it speaking of? This new thing is Christ being fully formed in a remnant. This is the new thing. This is the new thing that Isaiah chapter 43 speaks of. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of hold. No. Thus saith the Lord that maketh the way and the sea and the path and the mighty waters, that bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the battle. What's he talking about? This is talking about when he brought Israel out of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the battle. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Speaking of when he overthrew Pharaoh in the Red Sea. And then he says, Remember ye not the former things. I'm not going to deliver you this way. It's going to be a totally different way that I work. It's not going to be an external deliverance. I'm going to arise in a people, a new thing. A woman shall compass a man. This woman compassing a man is the birthing of Christ being fully formed in a people. And there he's going to bring the deliverance. And this is what it says in Jeremiah chapter 31 in verse 23. Um, how does it say it? Let me look here. Um, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 23 says, The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Who's that? It's a people who have become the habitation of Jesus, of Christ, who is fully formed in their, them, and they become the habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. That mountain of holiness is, mountain of holiness is Zion. Zion is a people in whom Christ inhabits, who is fully formed in who manifests his face. We see this in Isaiah 60. It's very clear. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And then farther down in Isaiah, it says, They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. This habitation of justice. Why? Because they become the habitation of justice and judgment because the king of glory sits in this people and through there his judgment comes forth, his justice comes forth. This is what um, Isaiah chapter 16, 5 verse teaches us. 
in mercy the throne is established and he the king of glory shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness why are these things hard to apprehend because they are a mystery <laughs> and a mystery a secret has to be revealed by the spirit we cannot get it through our carnal mind I don't care if you're a genius you're this scholar it comes by revelation and when it comes by revelation it's no longer a mystery it's no longer a secret but unfortunately this is still a secret to most of the church And it's through the fellowship of the mystery, the fellowship of the secret that Paul speaks of in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, that we fully enter into this revelation and it becomes a reality, Christ being formed in us, that we become the habitation of justice and the mountain of holiness as the Holy One of Israel inhabits us and his judgments come forth out of Zion. That's from a people. All nations shall flow unto Zion. That is a people in whom Christ is fully manifested, who have, who have full, wholly given themselves over unto him. And this is what Isaiah 61, um, where was I going? Isaiah chapter 59 where it says the enemy shall come in like a flood and I know some people say well that's not really it's it's the enemy shall come in like a flood the Lord shall raise up a snare against him no the scripture does in other places say that the enemy is going to come in like a flood but the Lord is going to lift up a standard against him what's that standard it's Christ being formed in a people that's the new thing this is how I'm going to deliver the earth I'm going to rise up in a people and manifest myself. I am the standard. <laughs> That's Isaiah 59. The enemy shall come in like a flood. The Lord shall lift up a standard against him. He is that standard in a people judging. And that's what. And then we come to Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. He is risen upon his people, a remnant who have wholly given themselves unto him to become the habitation. And this habitation is the tabernacle of David. That's why in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen. This revelation of the Holy Spirit that brought David into this revelation of abiding in Christ and him in you. That is the tabernacle of David. It is a dimension whereby we abide in him and him in us. That's what the tabernacle of David. And then all nations shall flow to that. This is why in that day, Amos 9, 11, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof and raise up his, David's ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. That they may inherit the remnant of Edom and all the heathen that are called by God my name the great harvest comes in as christ is fully manifested in the people and all nations come to see him come to that light O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness so back to isaiah chapter 43 Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. It's not like we've ever seen. He's not going to do it like people think. He's going to manifest himself in a people. And that's how he's going to deliver his people. Yeshua is going to come, but in a people, glorified in a people. Remember ye not the thing, former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. This righteous branch springing forth the branch shall ye not know it and I will make a way in the sea and the path of the mighty um, 
and I will give waters in the desert. Um, and I will make a way in the sea and path in my water. Rivers in the desert. Um, I'm jumping all over the place. <laughs> Back to the beginning here. But um, I do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? And I will give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Who does he choose? Those that choose him, that choose to wholly lay down their life to enter into union with him, that he would be fully manifested, that they would become his habitation. This people have I chosen for myself. This people have I chosen for myself. They shall show forth my praise. They shall show forth my praise. This is literally Christ's praise coming up out of a people. It is his praise. He is praising that he is fully being manifested in his people. This is made clear in the scriptures in Psalm 22. It says in Psalm 22, um, which is David's revelation of the cross, and Jesus in laying hold upon the horns of the altar, making intercession, says, For thou hast heard me, this is Christ speaking to the Father, For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn, speaking of the horns upon the brazen altar. That's his making intercession upon the cross. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. What congregation is this? The 144,000 staying upon Mount Zion. The great congregation. Zion, the people in whom he has chosen to fully manifest himself. That have given themselves wholly unto him. I will praise thee in the great congregation. That's speaking of his praise coming forth up out of them as he is fully formed in them. And then David goes on in that psalm to say, My praise shall be of thee, Jesus. My praise shall be of thee. As saying, it's not my praise that's coming forth from Christ up out of it, because David's going to be on that, at that place, standing upon Zion, because he was given as a leader and a commander to the people, it says in Isaiah 55. Incline your ear, it says in Isaiah 55. Incline your ear, come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. What's the sure mercies of David? The blood of Christ. It's the faithful mercies through the blood of Christ. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. For I have given him, David, for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. And you shall call a nation which thou knowest not. And nations which know not thee shall run unto thee. Because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified thee. He has manifested himself in you and shown himself to all creation through you. All nations are going to come to that light. Christ arising in your heart. Not you, no longer you, but Christ lives in me. O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. And what does Jeremiah say? And this is the covenant that I will make with them in that day, Jeremiah 31. 
I will put my law in their hearts and their minds will I write, write them and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. What are these laws? What are these commandments? It's that law that Christ gave to his disciples in John chapter 15, verse 7. Abide in me and I in you. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, John chapter 15, verse 7, that is the key of David right there. That is the law, the law of faith, the law of surrender, the law of liberty, whereby we abide in him and him in us and we come into one union, that we would be glorified together with him. If you abide in me, how do we do that? Through the blood. Through the blood, we come into the righteousness of Christ and we abide before the Father in the person of Jesus Christ, no longer I who lives. Raised together with Christ, seated in heavenly places. If you abide in me and my words, my rhema, my sayings, my truth, abide in you. There's mercy and truth. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, what are those? Abide in me and I in you. Those are the commandments. This is the law of the new covenant. whereby we enter into union. That's why at the Last Supper, what did he offer? The wine and the bread, representative of, of mercy and truth. This is what Melchizedek brought forth to Abraham. It was an invitation to the throne to rule and reign with him. In mercy, the throne is established, and he, the king of glory, shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David. How does that happen? How do we sit upon the throne with him? We must overcome. How do we overcome? This is the victory that overcomes the world. Your faith. Faith in the power of the blood. Faith in the authority of his word, the truth. Faith of abiding before the Father in the person of Christ. And faith of Christ in you. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 that Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? through faith. Until we are clothed with that revelation and that light. Until that light comes from the inside out and totally clothes us. This is why Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10, 11 is speaking of. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, of Yeshua. What is that? It's the light of Christ clothing me. It's a glorified body. It's that light from the inside, that lampstand, this light of Christ fully clothing us. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. See, that's me in him. When we abide in him, we come, we're clothed in his righteousness. As we abide in him, in him and us, we are clothed with the garment of Yeshua, of salvation, this light. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. Listen. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, geez, guess what? He sowed a seed into us. So shall the Lord God cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations, that all nations would come to this light spring forth before all nations. This is the branch. 
Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I new, do a new thing, now shall it spring forth. The springing forth is Christ arising in a people, fully manifested. A new thing, a woman shall compass a man. It is the birthing, the bride, the church, birthing the man-child. Revelation chapter 12. A great wonder appeared in heaven. The woman clothed with the sun, with the crown of twelve stars, birthing the man-child. That's Christ fully formed in them. Who it says is caught up to the throne to rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's simply Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That will they will come and bow at your feet, as it says in Isaiah 60. They shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 110, sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord, or is the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh shall send forth the scepter of thy Christ's strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. The people that have laid down their life. And the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. What does Melchizedek bring forth? Bread and wine. Mercy and truth. The key to union with Christ. No man has taught me this. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals the deep and secret things. And Daniel says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. Holy Spirit is the cipher. He is the key. And how is it released to us? Through intimacy. Through setting our hearts upon him. The Holy Spirit then releases these things to us. We can't just flippantly seek the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. But take our hearts, our minds off the things of this world and turn them to him alone. Do you, do you want to be filled with him, with all the fullness of God? It, it, it. Will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and the garden causes things there sown to spring forth, so shall the Lord God cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. That is the righteous branch, Christ being formed in a people. He's going to cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. This is the standard. The enemy shall come in like a flood, but the Lord shall lift up a standard against it. He 
He's going to cause righteousness, that's abiding in him, and praise, that's his praise coming forth up out of a people in whom he has become formed in. As David said, my praise shall be of thee. As Jesus is it prophesied in Psalm 22, I will praise you in the great congregation. going to cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake let's see this is Zion. O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. This is Zion. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth is brightness and the salvation thereof, the Yeshua thereof, as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Seated on the throne with him. This is the new thing. Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. It is to those who write this law upon their heart, abide in him and him in you. Solomon recounts this law that David taught to him in Proverbs chapter 4, where it says, My son, forget not my law. Forsake not my law. He said, bind mercy and truth about your neck. Write them, write these commandments upon the table of your heart. Mercy and truth, this law of the new covenant, whereby we abide in him and him in us. Isaiah 60 ends. Thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one should become a thousand, a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. I'm going to close in the end of Isaiah chapter 62, where it says, The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, I will mo no more give thy corn for meat to thine enemies, neither shall the sons of the stranger drink thy wine for which thou hast labored. But those that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And those that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates. The gates of righteousness abide in him. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, the way of righteousness. Cast up, cast up the highway of holiness so that Christ can come in and sit upon his throne in truth. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones, the stones of stumbling. Lift up a standard. The enemy shall come in like a flood. The Lord shall lift up a standard against it. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Shalom, shalom.